23rd Psalms. The 23rd Psalms. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. This is our text. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Look back at verse number four. Yea, though I walk through the valley and the shadows of death. I want to talk from the subject I'm going through. I'm going through. One of the things that I have discovered about uh, being in church, and it feels like I've been in church all my life, I, uh, I got saved in 1976, uh, and I've been really trying to do my best since then, and I found out that there are a lot of people who camouflage real good in the church. They, they can put on the right type of clothing and put on the right type of attire, makeup, uh, yak weave, whatever, Brazilian hair, real hair. And they can come in here and camouflage real good. As a matter of fact, I found myself sometimes uh, camouflaging up under uh, an attire, a hat, coat, clothes. But the truth is, the reality is, I'm going through. I, I don't know about you all, but life has a way of taking every last one of us through some stuff. And, and it's good to know that some of y'all don't look like what you've been going through. Right there ought to have been a hand clap right there because, child, if you really know what I'm going through, you would wonder, what am I doing here on pew number five? If you really knew what I was going through, I would be like some of them other individuals that just laid down and covered my head up and said, I ain't going to fool with that no more. I'm, I'm going through. I believe that if we poll this place and hand everybody a microphone and lined up, we'd be here all night talking about what we're going through. Now, here's the thing I've discovered about going through. Uh, it varies based on individual's life and ability to handle. Y'all didn't catch that one. It, what we go through, it varies on individuals and what each one of us can handle. Let me give it to you, first of all, from a practical view. Uh, each one of us will say, girl, I'm telling you what, man, I'm telling you, boy, I tell you what, I couldn't handle what you were going through. Anybody ever told you that? And then from a theological view, God says he knows just how much we can bear and he will place on us any more, nothing or no more than we're able to bear it. And so all of us will have the challenge of going through. Now the problem is not going through, the problem is in your attitude as you go through. It is based on the attitude of one who is going through. Because some of y'all, when you're going through, don't nobody want to fool with you. You don't want to fool with nobody, and you'll tell them, I don't feel like fooling with nobody, and I don't want nobody to fool with me. I'm going through. Bless Jesus. Right there, Lord. And you, we call on yeah, we, but we all, all of us, everybody in this room, we're all going to go through. 
In this psalm, Psalms 23, one of the most prolific psalms, it is a very practical psalm, but very powerful psalms. It is a psalm that has been quoted, uh, as a matter of fact, when I started to read it, I made sure today, I said, I'm going to read it. I wasn't going to quote it. I, and I read it while some of y'all were quoting it, and that ain't nothing wrong with that. Uh, and I was just noticing because we're all familiar with it. And so therefore, when it gets to verse number four, there is a challenge in the text that suggests to us that no matter what we're going through, we're going to go through the valley of the shadows of death. This psalm is, is a very exciting psalm, but, but when you look at this psalm, this psalm is written to those who have yielded their lives over to the Lord Jesus Christ. This psalm is a psalm of David who is excited about God and all that God has done for him. And he's now looking back over his life. He's come to a, a, a level of living where he realizes that the Lord is his shepherd. And so David begins to talk about it, and it is to written to those individuals who have been saved. This psalm is a psalm for those who have been saved. I, I thought I'd get a smile right there. You've been saved. You, you, you've uh, literally, you've been saved by grace. This is a psalm that is written to those whom God has now uh, lifted you up and moved you toward a new level of living. And the, first of all, this text opens up really exciting about David's life experiences and one of the things I've discovered about life is life is a great teacher Amen. Life, life is a great teacher. You don't have to enroll in life. You don't have to sign up for it. All you got to do is get up and start trying to live life and life will give you a class like no other college, no other elementary school, no other middle school, no other high school. Life can give you a class and you don't never have to leave your house. I'm trying to find my group here. And so therefore we discover David is speaking from this psalm, not when he was just a little boy trying to fight Goliath, not when he was living in his daddy's house. He has now grown up. And David looks back and he says, you know what? Uh, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. David discovers that God will supply all of his needs. And that's good to know because sometimes we get in a point where we need uh, some help. And it's good to know that we can testify like Big Mama used to say, all of my help. Some of y'all got a big mama. All of my help will come from the Lord. And so therefore we discovered that he says we would need this spiritual nourishment. We need to feed our souls. And brothers and sisters, if you don't feed your soul, your, listen, your inner man will perish. You'll give up on life. You'll stop in the middle of what you're going through. You've got to make sure that you nourish not only your outer man, your body, but you need to feed your soul. And many of us are guilty of taking care of our outer body and we don't do much, especially when we're going through, to build up our souls. And, and if you're going to make it in this world, you got to have a good body and a great soul. I wish I had a witness here. I, not, not, just a good, not just a good body, because bodily exercise profited little, but you ought to have a built up soul. Because here's the thing, your body is going to start decaying way before they give you a problem. Way before you get diagnosed with something, they're going to already tell you your hair going to just start falling out. You ain't got nothing. It's just, I used to have a nice head, like nice fro. And now I got a croissant. And I have done nothing to cause that just... I, I used to just wear regular glasses. I wish I had a witness here. Now I got glasses with invisible lines. Because this body, this, listen, this body, this outer man is perishing day by day. And so therefore, in order for us to make it through, we've got to renew the inward man. And how do we do that? We do it through the preaching and the teaching and the reading and the memorization of God's holy word. 
And so that builds up our inner man. But then David moves into verse number two, and he talks about restoration. He first talks about our spiritual nourishment in verse number one. Verse number two, he talks about our spiritual nourishment. He says he'll make us to lie down in green pastures. He'll lead us beside still waters. He, he literally lets us know God has the ability when we get tired, and I do get tired. I guess I'm the only one. When we get frustrated, God can still restore us. He can restore us. We, life has a way of damaging us. We have accidents. We have dents. But God can pull us in and restore us. Have you ever just been restored? You lost your joy, nothing, you don't know how you did. Then all of a sudden you woke up and you say, this joy I have, the world didn't give to me and the world can't take it away. You he restored your joy. He restored your hope. Looked like all hope was gone. You felt like you wanted to throw in the towel, but then you discovered my hope is built Oh, nothing less but Jesus' love and his righteousness. And, and have you ever just gotten to a life where God just restores you? You were feeling down. You didn't have no joy. You didn't have no peace. And then all of a sudden, you get up and you say, God, I'm going to trust in you. I'm going to trust in the Lord with all my heart. I'm going to lean not to my own understanding. I'm going to acknowledge him. And before you know it, God restores restores you he, and he's good about that and then he's also he David in his Psalms when you read it a little further you discover that he also offers some guidance uh, he says for he leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake and I love that because he leads me in the path of righteousness God, God's in control like somebody ought to say God's in control God's in control. He's leading me. Uh, David said it best. He said, I've been young and now I'm old. But never have I seen the righteous forsaken. Thank you, Lord. Nor his seeds begging bread. I, now, and, and which presupposes that you can be broke but don't have to beg. Y'all, that didn't catch it. That means I need to go back down on Metropolitan. Listen, sometimes in life you can be broke but you don't have to beg. What do you have to do? Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He shall strengthen your heart. For they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They'll mount up with wings like eagles. They'll run and not be weary. They'll even walk and not faint. God has a way. And then he gets into verse number four, which now brings us into our text. And he starts talking about the blessings that are on the other side of through. Because now life as God has, we've been saved. God has sanctified us. God is now moving us and we're going in the path that God has chosen for us. But even though we're going in the same path, we find ourselves in dark places sometimes. And then, you know what I've discovered too, that sometimes you can be connected to somebody then they end up leading you in a dark place you all you were doing was just trying to be there you were just trying to be the best husband or the best wife thought I'd let that lay there a little bit and then before you know it you standing before the judge you didn't want it but it's a dark place now looking at me funny let me prove what I said Paul was on his way to Rome he told them not to let off at Crete they, he said as a matter of fact we are not loose from here and all of a sudden they find themselves in a storm and Paul has to remind them I didn't make the decision to get in the boat y'all pulled me in the boat now we in a storm but we gonna make it but how we gonna make it we gonna make it on broken pieces we won't lose our lives but we'll lose some stuff Anybody ever lost some stuff? And I found out the stuff I lost, I really didn't need it no how. I couldn't afford that stuff. I couldn't handle that stuff. And so therefore, the text says, now we're going through. And one of the things that we all can appreciate is that every last one of us, I know you're looking real good this morning. I know you look real nice, got your church clothes on. But all of us, if we'd be honest, once we get to the house, we're going through. Amen. I had a lady at our church. She was there and I, after service. I gave her benediction and I walked up to her shaking folks' hands. She's still sitting there. I'm shaking other folks' hands. She's still sitting there. Finally, when the church was about empty, she was still sitting there. And I walked over there and I said, Sister, you still there? She said, Pastor, after that benediction game, I don't want to leave here. 
I got too much I'm going through when I leave this place. Now she said that through service. She looked real church. She looked something like y'all. Looked real church. It looked like she was attentive. But all the while, her body was with me. But her mind, I wish, was on the other side of town. All of us will have to go through. So how, preacher, do we go through? How can we get through? You don't really know what I'm going through. The doctors have said I can't make it. Matter of fact, family members have deserted me. You don't really know what I am going through. And going through is a process. It is a process. It is a thought. And so David says, here's the thing you got to understand. There are two facts that you need to know before, as you're going through. First of all, you need to know that you should not fear. Secondly, you all don't realize that the Lord is with you. As you're going through whatever it is you're going through, as we're going through whatever it is I'm going through, I cannot lose sight of these two facts. As Christians, we cannot lose sight of these two facts, and that is you should not fear. Watch it said right in the text, verse number four. The Lord is, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of the death, I will not fear. Why? Fear is the enemy of your faith. Fear can attack your faith. As a matter of fact, let me prove it. Uh, let's, let's look at somebody else's life. You remember them 12 disciples Jesus had? And Jesus looked at them. They had a huddle up right at the edge of the, the Gadarene Sea. He said, now let us cross over to the other side. And they all got in the boat. And Jesus got in, got in the hinder part, laid down on a pillar. And as they were going through, the Bible says a storm came up. Watch this, y'all. And, and they were so afraid. And they went up and woke Jesus up and said, Master don't you care that we perish? And I love Jesus, y'all. Jesus didn't say nothing to them right then. He went and handled the situation. He walked to the, that which he had created. Wind, hush, wave, be quiet. And then he walked past them and said, Oh, ye of little faith, why did you fear? If, you, if Jesus is with you, if he's on board, be not afraid. Jesus says, it's I. I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. And they got, I mean, here Jesus is, y'all, and when you really read the text, you'll discover they got on the boat after Jesus had just fed 5,000 folk. Each one of them had a basket full of fish and loaves. They sitting on the boat. Jesus done blessed their life like some of you. He done blessed your life like some of you. And now you are with all of the blessings God has sitting right by your feet just like some of you. And now here come another little old wind and you done got scared. Why? You know Jesus is with you. How you know he's with you? Because places I used to go, I don't go. Things I used to do, I don't do no more. Things I used to say, I don't say them as much. I ain't going to lie. Don't push me. Because I'm close to the edge. I'm trying not to lose my head. It's like a jungle. There's going to be somebody in here that makes me wonder how I keep from going under it. And listen, I'm telling you now, you can't fear. Let me, tell you, let me bless you right quick. You know what happens when you start getting afraid? When you get fear? What you do is start operating in the wrong spirit. Teach Kenner Wayne. Whenever you start working in fear, you are now being governed and guided by the wrong spirit. How you know that, Kenner Wayne? Paul had to tell him, God has not given us a spirit of fear. So therefore, spirit is a fear. Listen, spirit is a spirit. Therefore, he said he's given us what is called love, power, and a sound mind. And so as you're going through the prerequisite, the, the two factors that you need to remember is don't you be afraid. Can I give it to you in modern day language? If God brought you to it, I got three people jumped on them. Let me help you. Then. If God brought you through it, God will carry you through it. Are y'all in here? Watch this. Watch this. When you read that text, another fact in this text, verse number four, he says, not only don't fear, but don't you forget. Don't you forget that God is with you. 
Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I will fear no evil, for thou, thank you, sister, are with me. Can I bless you right quick? I don't care how you feel, you are never alone. I don't care if everybody, you the last, girl, I'm the last living Johnson. No, you ain't. But you the last living Johnson in your family. I don't know what I'm, no, you, you ain't by yourself. I laid my husband to rest, my wife to rest, and I'm living in this house by, you not by yourself. God promised us, thank you, Lord, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. I will not let you alone. He says, I'll be with you, how long? Even until the end of the ages. God promised us. And sometimes when we're going through, we feel like we're on a lonely island in the heart of a city. We're the only person at the party not dancing. We're the only person at the family reunion not drinking. We feel like we're all by ourselves. Oh, that ain't y'all kind of family reunion. I'm sorry. Sometimes we feel like we're by ourselves. But the good news is, as you are going through, you got to remember these two factors. One is you cannot fear. And the second one is that you're never alone. God promised us. And I'm telling you now, when you're going through sometimes, you feel like you're by yourself. Sometimes when you're going through, you feel like you're by yourself. So, Pastor, what are the blessings? What is the blessing on the other side of through? What, what's, what's, what's behind the dark clouds? What, what's behind the doors that seem to be shut? What's, the, what's behind all of my depression? What's behind all of this that I'm going through? Y'all want to know what it is? It's found in this text. First of all, you discover there are some blessings on the other side of through. The first blessing is God is preparing not only you, but he's preparing a place. That blessed me when I saw that, y'all. He said, listen, thou hast prepared a table right in the presence of mine enemy. Isn't it good to know that when you get through wherever you're going through or whatever you're going through, God has already set it up. He's already, let, let me make it more practical because y'all looking at me funny again. You broke. And your electric company give you one of them letters that turn colors. You get one of them that turn colors. You broke. You won't get paid until the 15th. They're going to cut it off on the 13th. Y'all, none of y'all had to deal with this, so let me just go around my neighborhood. And, and, and so now I got to figure out, do I go and pawn my VCR I done borrowed money from so many folk, I can't go see them no more. I, I can't go by mama house because mama won't even give me nothing else no more. She won't give me canned green beans, nothing. And, and so I'm, I'm in a bad shape. What do I do? I pick up the phone and I call my electric company and I say, hello, sister. <laughs> That's a little help right there. And then all of a sudden, a sister is on the other line. And I say, I'm not able to make the payment. I don't have no money, and my, 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 my bill doesn't turn colors. I, it's about to be cut off, what, uh, and, and I won't have nothing until the 15th. She said, wait a minute. I'll tell you what. When you got the electric bill, when you got the first, got your page, your electric bill for the first time, I said, you, you gave us $200. Yes, I did. That $200 had been sitting in there for the last three years. We owe you. I don't have your head. I tell you what, you don't have to pay your electric bill for the next two months. Y'all, y'all, God ain't never done that for you. I called Carmack, told Carmack, I ain't had no money. Carmack told me you ain't got to pay your bill. Why I don't have to pay my bill? Because when you put your down payment, we put some payment at the end. I didn't know that you could get a payment at the and you know what I did? I did just like that sister did right there. I just started waving my hand. Yeah. Hung up the phone real fast. And told the Lord, thank you. Because listen, y'all. God has already, well, let me bless you right quick. He, watch this. He has blessed us, Ephesians says, with all 
spiritual blessings in the heavenly place. That didn't bless you. Watch it. The steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord, which presupposes every step you take, God has already set the steps. That, that's good news for me. And so he has a prepared table. He don't have to go and try to get it together. It's all, only thing I've got to do is go through what I'm going through. And when I get to the other side, the first blessing is, is preparation. God has already prepared the victory. Here it is, here it is. The battle has already been fought. And the victory has already been won. That didn't catch him. You don't have to wait until the battle is over. You can shout. That goes six of y'all to come in here with me. You can start shouting right now. As a matter of fact, if Israel, if, if the children of Israel were to start praising God on their way out of Mr. Pharaoh's house, they wouldn't have had no 40 day journey, 40 year journey. They'd have had an 11 day journey. But because they did like most of us do when we're starting to go through, we sit out there and murmur and complain and we keep going in circles and circles. But as soon as you lift up your voice and say, Lord, thank you for opening up the Red Sea. Lord, thank you for being so good. Lord, thank you for delivering me. Listen, God will, listen, the going through ain't as long as it should be. But watch this. He blessed, the blessing is there is preparation because God has already prepared the table. Now, if he's prepared the table, the good news is he knows what's going to be at the table. He prepared the table, but then watch his second blessing was not only preparation, but there was some jubilation. Why, it's right in the text. Thou, thou has anointed my head with oil. My cup runs over. God gave him joy. Isn't it amazing when, once you go through what you've been through, that you've got a level of joy that nobody can understand. Wait, let me prove it. You come start shouting at church before the organ start playing. You, you start shouting long before the preacher prays. You don't have to be like everybody else, have to wait until the music starts, then you get up. Then you have to wait until the prayer starts praying, then you stand up. You come in with a praise on your lips. Why? Because you realize that God has brought you through. You ought not enter to his gates with no praise. He says enter to his gates with thanksgiving and in his courts with praise. By the time you leave your house and get to his house, you ought to already be tired. Some Sunday mornings, when I come into the Mount Carmel church, I'm already sweating. And they say, Pastor, is it too warm out there for you? No, God's just been too good to me. And when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul, not my body, my soul cries out, Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Y'all ever got like that? I tell you, worship will be a whole lot better. It's kind of like that party you used to go to, BYOB. Now you BYO your praise. You bring in to with some praise. Don't wait on this man to get you all pumped up. When he started hollering, I hollered back. That's why I walked out here for what time. They started singing too good. I said, I ain't going to sit back here by myself. Nobody didn't come to Salem go to church by myself. I came to church to have worship. I didn't make up my mind. I'm going through a whole lot of stuff. Ain't no use of me sitting back there by myself. I'm going to come in here because God inhabits the praise of his people. There y'all coming on in the window with me. Now. And he sets up and dwells. I want to be where he is. Bible says here they had some joy. What gave them joy? Because they had something behind them. They had God in front of them as a shepherd. And they had God behind them as goodness and mercy. For goodness and mercy are known as the twin attributes of God. So therefore, I've got God in front of me as a shepherd. And I've got God behind me as goodness and mercy. So nothing ever gets to me from the front nor the back. Unless it first of all passes by divine inspection. God's going to work this thing out. 
And so therefore, not only do they have jubilation, and brothers and sisters, you ought not look like what you've been going through. Why is that, Pastor? Because it's an indictment against our God. You walking around with your head all dropped down, and you know God can work it out. How do you know God can work it out? Because he worked it out for my grandmama. He worked it out for my mama. He been working it out for me. And so whatever I'm faced with right now, I can just trust in the Lord to work it out for me. And so therefore, verse number seven, as he comes to the conclusion of it, he says there's another blessing. Not only is there preparation and not only is there jubilation, but on the other side of the truth, there's also glorification. God's going to glorify us. Better brothers and sisters, you got to understand, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. And you know what I've discovered? I ain't got to the house of the Lord, but I made it to his house. And so, therefore, I ought to start practicing. Every Sunday morning is an opportunity for me to practice what I'm going to do in heaven. And so, I make up my mind every Sunday morning that I'm going to give God some praise. Doesn't matter how I feel. Things may not be like I want them to be. But I'm going to praise his name. For from the rising of the sun to the going down of the saint. The name of the Lord is worthy to be praised. I heard David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. And brothers and sisters, I made up my mind. Things may not be like I want them to be. I'm going to praise his name. Anybody here feel like praising his name? I know you're going through hell and high water, but if you lift up your hands, trouble don't seem to last always. You can say like the psalmist says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy, joy, go morning. Anybody here got some joy? Can you lift up your hands? Open up your mouth. Stand on your feet and shout unto God with a voice of triumph and say he's worthy. He's worthy. Hey, worthy is the lamb. Ain't he been good? Had he made a way? Had he lifted your life? Had to wipe your tears had to turn you around had to put joy in your heart you ought to say thank you thank you thank you thank you yeah, thank you for being so good why y'all to tell him thank you because he died for you and he died for me he took our place on a hill called Calvary, they hung him high, stretched him wide, he dropped his head, and he died. Didn't he die? He died until the moon dripped away in blood. Early, early, he got up on a Sunday morning. All power was in his hand. I'm on my way. I'm Thank God I'm on 